Hi everyone, welcome back to Dance Geek. Um, I've tried to do this video uh, several times since starting my channel, um, which means I've tried to do it a couple of, quite a few times in the last like three years, two, three years. I don't know how long I've been doing this channel. Um, and I, I want to do it because it, it will help me <sighs> help me to stay accountable, I suppose, um, and to keep going with, with this journey. Ugh, I hate that word. It's reality TV shows have completely destroyed that journey, that word journey. Um, but you know, that's what it is. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, if you watch my other videos, I'm definitely, <laughs> this is not me talking about something that I'm confident about and that I know really well and um, it, quite the opposite. <laughs> this is me figuring stuff out and learning as I go. Um, so it is a lot more about me, Claire, rather than about Dance Geek. Um, it's a lot more raw and stripped back. <laughs> Um, but I think as well, like, yes, I'm doing this to help myself and to keep myself accountable, but I also, I want to help other people. That's a big part of why I do my job. I love helping other people. I also don't want to go through this alone and I'm not really good at asking people for help, especially when I need help, when in a position where I'm vulnerable or not knowing what I'm doing and <laughs> um but doing a video about it and a video series and putting it out on the internet I don't know there's like a separation there that I feel a little bit more comfortable doing at this space so anyway for whatever it's worth that's why I'm doing this series um. So I'm wanting to relearn how to dance. Um, this isn't clickbait. I, it's not that I've forgotten how to dance. It's that my body has done everything it can really to stop me from dancing. Um, and that's where I, that's where this whole idea of me accumulating so much knowledge comes in. I started thinking about this ages ago um, that and this is a very generalized statement but I feel like one of the reasons that I know so much about dance and performance and how the body works and needs to work within the dance performance world is because physically it didn't come naturally to me at all so if you think about it like this if you're a dancer who has the facility to dance as in your body is just You've got the turnout, you've got the flexibility, you've got some strength there, that even things like, you know, the, the, your, the right height, all of that. If your body's just built to naturally do this, to dance naturally, and, and it doesn't come particularly hard to you, then you don't really need to think about how to do something. Your body just does it. Um... And I'm not saying that if you have the natural facility to dance that you don't work hard. I know you work hard. I, I totally know that. But what I'm saying is from a very young age, my body just didn't comfortably do the things that it needed to do to be a dancer and to train to be a dancer. So I had to listen a lot more in class. Um, and I did a lot of research myself. I saw a lot of doctors, um, dance specific profession, medical professionals. So I was seeing a dance podiatrist from the age of eight, dance physiotherapist from the age of eight, um, because I was always getting injured. Um, and a lot of the time it wasn't injuries, like, like I'd fall over. Yeah. Cause you know, but it was also just like really bad aches and not just, I'm not just talking about doms. I'd be like, God, this is really sore. And my mum was so hands-on and so um, proactive with my training. And oh, 
loved, loved that. So she was like, all right, yeah, these injuries probably shouldn't happen as much and let's, let's sort this out, but let's go to a dance doctor and get their perspective on it. So I learned a lot from a young age about my alignment and why my alignment's out. Um, I had my point assessment done during a time that we didn't really get them done in your regular studios. I had it done when I was about 10 or 11, um, not because I was going to go on point then at 10 or 11, um, but because we wanted to see if there was going to be anything else that was going to stop me from going on, wanting to go on point at 12. Um, and there was, there was a lot of things. So I had to learn different exercises and how to fix them. And, um, so basically because my body didn't really, wasn't really structured to be a dancer easily, I had to work harder and I had to learn more about how to get my body to do something that it didn't really want to do. <sighs> All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. What have I got? What actual conditions, diagnosed conditions, have stopped me from dancing um, and gotten me to where I am now? So, um, there's a lot of emotion wrapped up in all of this, so I'm going to try and be as clinical as possible so that I don't you know, burst into tears or whatever. But anyway, um, I have psoriatic arthritis. It's an autoimmune condition. Uh, it a, it, it does present like a, most arthritis where you get like joint pain and swelling, inflammation, that kind of thing. However, it's not like your standard arthritis that people think about tends to be osteoarthritis. And that's where you've had um, mainly where you've had an injury and then arthritis sets in there. Uh, mine comes from my immune system. So pretty much I've always had it. I'm 39 now. I was diagnosed when I was 17. Um... And, but I, I, looking back, I, it was very clear I had it before then. Um, things that sorry, psoriatic arthritis do, you get psoriasis, or you have psoriasis as well. Um, so psoriasis is when your skin cells produce too much and you end up with like flaky, itchy, and then sometimes very, very sore, broken skin. Um, you'll get deformed fingernails. Um, which I've always had. Bone and joint pain. Um, Flare-ups are when you're, when it just goes nuts, basically. But look, essentially what psoriatic arthritis is, is an overactive immune system. So if you think about your immune system, it's supposed to fight off foreign bodies that are not supposed to be in your body. Mine is kind of always trying to do that or at least during a flare, it's trying to do that. The thing that helps me understand it is it's like it's really, really keen and eager and overactive, but it's also a little bit blind. So it's like if you've got in your body and you've got an infection here, my immune system probably just needs like, say, maybe just one guy, two guys, little troops to go and fight that infection. Mine, instead of producing one or two, goes, let's get everyone involved and bring some more guys. So like picture five hands and then it goes, let's go attack it. The, the, the actual foreign body is here and my little immune system troops are off over here fighting off my right hip, if that makes sense. Um, so it doesn't really know. It's extra and blind. Don't know where to go. Uh, another contributing factor is I have BPD, which is borderline personality disorder. Um, it is most likely caused due to several traumas I've had in my life. <clears throat> I'm not going to get into what those traumas are, but BPD is kind of like a fracturing of your personality. Uh, it's not split personality, it's not DID or multiple personality. It's not that, but it is in the same family as that. Um, I am very medicated and in therapy and very controlled when it comes to my BPD. It's really well managed. I have an amazing support system of people. Um, I have, I call them my team, <laughs> um, doctors, um, therapists, um, the, the works, as well as my people, as in my, my husband, my best friend, um, and my family. I like to call myself high functioning BPD, but the thing is BPD has some very, very scary uh, symptoms. So I, I like analogies 
as you can tell from my little um, BPD, people who suffer from BPD, uh, well, first of all, it's not curable. Um, it is definitely manageable and treatable, but it's not curable. This is how my brain works and it's how my brain will always work, but I can control and manage the not so great aspects of it. One of the things that comes, one of the symptoms, I suppose, of BPD is self-harm. And this is the part that's really relevant to this video series. Um, now, self-harm, we normally think of cutting. Have I dabbled in that? Yes, um, but it wasn't my go-to. Um, and I call, I say my go-to, that's my terminology, because with BPD, you kind of get all the standard mental health problems. Um, so some people get depression and they'll have a bout of depression and some people have clinical depression, which is kind of always there. Some people have generalized anxiety disorder or they're just prone to anxiety. Um, with BPD, you kind of get everything. Um, I think of it as a buffet, like a big buffet smorgasbord and you want to try everything and I'll have a go at that, I'll have a bit of that, I'll have a bit of that, I'll have a bit of that. Um, but there's always though that one or two thing that you're like, yeah, I really liked that, I'll go back to that. Um, for me, with self-harm, I, <sighs> yeah, I've dabbled in a lot of different forms of self-harm. Uh, I don't know why I'm laughing, it's just what I do, sorry. Um, my go-tos with self-harm though were bulimia, um, so I am a recovering bulimic <sighs> and dance. I used dance, the training aspect of dance as a form of self-harm. Um, I have very, very vivid memories of being in dance classes and doing, so a rond de jambe on there. Um, and I would develop it to the front. And as the leg started to move around and it'd get to second, I'd start to feel my hip go, no, I don't want to do this. And I taught myself to sadistically enjoy that pain um, because I deserved that pain, because I was useless and lazy and all the other very, very bad thoughts that would come in. Then when my leg would get to that back corner, the, the I call it the devil's corner <laughs> when I'm teaching. It's that horrible bit where your hip just doesn't want to <clears throat> and transition through. Um, oh, I, I would the things I would say in my head, I'm not going to repeat here. And this is stuff I was doing when I was like nine, 10, young kid, completely mentally berating myself for it. But the outward appearance is always more important in dance. So I never was like, like this. I would have this, you know, serene Russian ballerina look on my face. And inside, I was telling myself these horrid, horrid things. Um, and I used to do that with so many other parts of dancing. When I was on stage, it was different. The actual performance time, I didn't feel anything physical. It was all just coming from... Because funnily enough, the acting side of things, the, the performance and the artistry, that was one part of dance that wasn't really a struggle for me. Um, except when my mental health was really bad. <laughs> anyway, um, so physically I use dance as a form of self-harm. Um, it wasn't picked up even in myself really until about five years ago because dancers work hard. They work so hard. And I was just seen as a kid that worked really, really hard really really hard it was a really easy form of self-harm for me to conceal because the thing about self-harm in the brain of someone with BPD in particular 
with me particularly. I did not want people to know that I was weak in any way. And not that mental health, I don't believe now that mental illness is weak, it's not. But I was so scared that people were gonna know that I had this weakness in me. And I didn't want people to see any of the self-harm that I inflicted on my, my body, which is why I didn't really resonate or sit well with cutting because it was so hard to do and not have scars. And um, I also have hyperhidrosis and always have had, so I excessively sweat. So I couldn't wear a long sleeve in, in class. I couldn't wear long sleeve leotards or crossovers because I'd just be drenched in sweat and want to pass out. So I didn't really gravitate towards cutting because I couldn't conceal it. Um, I never had a problem with weight when I was younger, do now. Um, I didn't start being a bulimic because I had, I thought I was too fat. I didn't think that at all. Um, I was very skinny. So bulimia for me was a way to control and punish because in the mind of someone with BPD, we the trauma that I've experienced taught me that I deserved to be punished and the multitude of emotions that you feel conflicting at times, at all the times, um, is so hard to control that you want something you can control. So bulimia was my way of controlling what I couldn't control. Things I couldn't control anything else, so I'll just control the bulimia. Um, but it was also, a, it was definitely self-harm as well. Um, so because I used dance training to harm myself, I developed a very unhealthy relationship with physical activity in general. I don't have that ability to be able to just go for a run or do a workout and really feel those that endorphin rush because yes the endorphins are there but there's chemical imbalances in my brain that kind of way overshadow at overshadow any endorphin rush that I get from a workout and the phys physical activity so um, now that I'm medicated and my medi I'm, we're on the right medication um, and all of that, it's actually it's a bit easier now for me to actually feel an endorphin rush from working out. Um, so they're the main reasons why I don't dance and I can't dance. Um, but the thing with psoriatic arthritis and with BPD is that exercise, the right exercise, definitely, definitely helps in recovery and in management. So this is something that I need to do um, for my chronic conditions, but I feel more than that, it's something I want to do. In, in managing my BPD, I did there lots of different types of therapy. Um, DBT, dialectical behavior therapy, is one of the main forms that people with BPD um, go through. Uh, my main forms of therapy. And um, there's a lot of things in DBD, DBT that has actually come into mainstream just wellness and self-help and all that self-care. Um, it's a great program, but it's full on. Um, and anyway, one of the things, one of the many things and tasks that you do in DBT is you create like a... Um, a self-care list and an emotional, um, sorry, a distress tolerance list. Um, and it's basically, it's like a kit. At one point I had a physical kit when I was learning how to do it. Of things that help manage your distress levels. Um, and this is really good to help get other people in your life who live with you, so like my husband or my, um, my sisters, whatever. Um, if I'm not able to control my emotions they can offer suggestions and sometimes something that works really well is going to be like another one one day you might go no don't want to do that but on other days it will work um anyway so one of the things that was always something that worked really well for me when i was younger was dance it out and i'd i'd close my door and i'd just dance um, or I'd fake a sickie from school and I'd stay home and I'd just push the furniture back and I'd dance, I'd just dance it out. Um, and because of my arthritis now, I can't really do that. Um, well, I couldn't do that. Um, the feeling that I would get of just dancing to music, impro, whatever, I loved it. Um, 
and it really did help to calm me down. And because it wasn't training as such, like a class or a workout or anything, it was just like dance, it, I didn't have the, the self-harm connection to it. That self-harm element wasn't really there. Um, and I miss that. I miss having dance it out on my list. Um, I love to dance and I want to dance again. So my goals with, with this process, I do want to lose weight. Um, I am carrying extra weight from the disordered eating and bulimia, from having two children, from being quite sedentary when I've had all these really bad um, injuries that I've had to be resting to help recover from. Um, and I really want to, I want to lose this excess weight that I have. Um, It's also much, much better on your joints when you have less weight. That's just a fact. Um, so for me, losing weight is definitely important to my health. Uh, I want to do it without losing the work that I've done on my mental health and my body image um, that I've done over the last 30 years or however long because I like who I am. I'm not really massively ashamed of my body or my weight. I'm really good at managing that. So when I'm like getting ready, like I'm about to go out and date night with my husband. And when I'm getting ready, yeah, I get those moments where I'm like, oh God, I look so fat in this. But I'm really good now at just shutting that down and reframing into something more positive, more body positive. I'm good at body positivity now, um, but I don't want, a weight loss venture to to derail that and to set me back in that regard. Uh, so I want to lose weight, not for aesthetic purposes, but for my own physical well-being, for my health, um, and for my quality of life. Um, I want to be able to dance again. <laughs> Things I want to be able to do. Um, I want to be able to jump i'm not wanting to be able to do like massive grand allegro but i'd like to be able to jump without fear of rolling an ankle um popping my hip out or uh peeing myself um <laughs> from pregnancy it does a lot of crazy things to your pelvic floor and your ability to you know not wet yourself hmm. um i want to be able to do a double pirouette again and I want to get back in my point shoes. So that's my goals. Um, I, I hope that this helps other people in a similar situation. And look, you don't have to have the major, you know, childhood trauma dramas and eating disorders and illnesses, chronic illnesses and all that blah, that I've got. I think the, the important thing about this is that I'm a mum and a teacher and they are the biggest self-sacrificing roles in society. Mums don't think about themselves, we think about our, well we do think about ourselves but we are very much bottom of the list of people that we care about and that we look after. Um, and teachers are very similar, it's all about the students. I don't dance flat out in my classes because I need to be watching what my students are doing and it's all about them. So I, and I don't want to change that, but I do need some balance and a different perspective on it. So if you're the same, um, then either, you know, pop it in the comments, what your goals are going to be to get yourself back to dancing again. Um, where it's dancing because we love to dance, because we have to dance, because there's that thing inside us as dancers where it's not just something we love to do, it's something we have to do. Um, yeah, so let's share in the comments. If you don't feel ready to do that, but you still want to talk to someone, feel free to DM me or email me. All my details are down in the description box below. Um, and yeah. Let's just see what happens.